Hello and welcome to another Rygate Maths video. My name is Simon and in this video we're focusing on the kinematics and vectors section of the second year mechanics content for the Edexcel A-level maths. This first video we're going to be looking at constant acceleration. So when we see constant acceleration in the sort of realm of mechanics and uh, kinematics that tells us we're dealing with super okay the suvat equations as you're given in the formula book v equals u plus at s equals a half u plus v times t s equals ut plus a half at squared s equals vt minus a half at squared and v squared equals u squared plus 2 a s now when we start thinking about vectors we need to be very very careful with these suvat equations one of these doesn't work because of the cons because of the quantities that out that are vectors in suvat so four out of the five suvat quantities are vector quantities displacement the two velocities and acceleration so when we start dealing with vectors in the form a i plus b j, for instance, these are not just numbers, they are vectors. So one of our five Subat equations doesn't work, and it's this last one. Okay, that equation does not work. The other thing as well we need to be careful about is the wording of the question. Now, with vectors and this type of question, quite often it's going to be talking about a ship moving or um, a plane moving through the sky or something like that. Quite typically, though, we're not necessarily going to be starting at the origin. If we start at a point, and let's say we travel here, this is our displacement. If we're interested in finding where we finish, we're looking at this vector here. Now this vector r is known as a position vector because it tells us the position of something relative of our particle relative to the origin. So in order to find it we need to know where it started. So we might have an initial position vector r0 where our final position vector is this initial position vector plus the displacement. Now this is only really relevant if we don't start at the origin, because if we start at the origin this is just the vector 0, 0. So we're there. Other than that, a lot of this is very very similar. We might have to play around with things like displacements or distances from the origin. Um, you know, you, you may have a question that's talking about radar and the range of a signal is only so far. You need to know if your plane goes through that signal, that kind of thing. But for now, for this video, we're just going to look at a couple of basic examples. So here's our first example. As is very typical with these mechanics questions, they're quite wordy. So what we need to do is we need to unpick the words. Particle P has velocity three I, minus 3i three I plus j at time t equals 0. So that gives us some information. The particle moves with constant acceleration. That's the key phrase. That tells us we're doing SUVAT. OK, so we can immediately start with our SUVAT, writing it down. Now be careful, you must underline S, U, V and A because they are vectors. So we have our velocity is this at time t is 0, so that's our initial velocity, minus 3i plus j. Moves with constant acceleration, 2i plus 3j, and we're told its time is 3. And we want the speed of the particle and the bearing on which it's traveling. So we're talking about the direction of motion, not where it is, 
we're interested in how it's moving. So we're talking about the V. So we don't want S at all. So now we look at V equals U plus A T. And we just use the equation as normal. So we have U plus 3, so time times A. Tidying it all that up, we get minus 3i plus 6i, so 3i, plus j plus 9j, so plus 10j meters per second. Okay, we haven't answered the question, we want the speed and the bearing. So let's just draw ourselves a little diagram because that'll help with the bearing. We know we're going 3i, 10j, we're going this way. The bearing is going to be this angle here. So we're going 3 across and 10 up. So that will come in, in useful later. So we want speed. That's the magnitude of V. So we've got 3 squared plus 10 squared square rooted, which comes out as root 109 meters per second to the minus 1. Now we're doing mechanics. So strictly speaking, we should be rounding that because the numbers actually mean something. A speed of, 100, of root 109 meters per second doesn't really mean much, whereas a speed of 10 meters per second or 10.4 meters per second to three significant figures means something. So with the bearing, let's call it theta, we know that tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so theta is inverse tan 0.3, so 16.699 and some stuff. Remember bearings must be given as three digits relative to north with no decimals. So it's moving at a speed of 10.4 meters per second on a bearing of 0, 0.17 degrees. So here's our second example. A particle starts at rest and moves with constant acceleration. After five seconds, its velocity is three, four meters per second. So notice how now we're using column vector notation. Much like normal vectors, you can use either, depending on whichever you prefer. Strictly speaking though, you should be consistent with whatever's in the question. So if the question uses ij notation, use ij notation in your answer. Here, we have column vector notation. We should be using column vector notation in our answer. Again, we've got this nice phrase constant acceleration, which tells us we're doing SUVAT. So it takes a lot of the thinking out of this question. So we're told it starts at rest. So we know the initial ex initial velocity is zero, and after five seconds, its velocity is three, four. Part A, we want to find the acceleration. Part B, we want to find the displacement. We're not worrying about position vector because it starts from what we are referring to as the origin. We're not told where it starts. Okay, It's not a ship that's starting at a point and we're trying to make sure it doesn't hit a lighthouse or something like that. So, part A, I'm actually going to just put part A down here. We're trying to find the acceleration. We have V, U, and T. So again, we use V equals U uh, plus AT. We have this is 3, 4. U is 0. So we've got 5A, the acceleration. So A is 3 over 5, 4 over 5 meters per second to the minus 1. Now we're told to find the acceleration. This is the acceleration. We're not trying to told to find the magnitude, so we don't go any further than this. This is what we do. For part B, we want to find the displacement vector. So we we now we don't want to use this A just in case we got it wrong. So we 
we use s is a half u plus v times t. We could use this if you wanted to, if you wanted to use a different equation, but just in the off chance you happen to get that wrong, this equation also works fine. So again, we've got a half times 3, 4 times 5, because u is 0. So we have 15 over 2, 7.5, and 10. Okay, we're told for the displacement vector, not the vec not the displacement itself, so we're done. The last thing you need to really focus on potentially with this type of question is the compass, which sounds very strange, but it is very important. Because sometimes you'll have questions saying, oh, find the time when the particle is moving in the nor a northeasterly direction. So we need to have our compass ready. So obviously here we've got north, south, east, and west. And typically, unless you're really unless you're told otherwise, which would be very, very rare, I is this way and J is this way. So when we are traveling north, the J component is positive and the I component is zero because there's, it's just going straight north. Going south, it's the other way around. The J is negative, or the J is negative, and I is zero. And then going west, we have that I is negative and J is zero. And here we have I is positive, J is zero. So if we're moving in one of these four cardinal directions, it's just looking at one of the one of the things. So for instance, if we have, oh, the velocity of the particle is given by 3t i plus 6 minus t j, for instance, and we want to find the time when it's moving due east, we would set the j component equal to zero to find the time. That kind of thing. So that's that's really kind of what this is about. The key thing as well is talking about d deciding whether it's moving in that direction or it is that direction relative to a point. Velocity is when it is moving in a direction. Displacement is when it is. So if something is due north, its displacement has this property. If it's moving due north, its velocity has this property. The difficulty comes when we start moving in directions like this. Whether we're moving northeast, southeast, southwest, or northwest. The key thing with these is that these directions split this quadrant exactly in half. So the size of the velocity or displacement, the size of the components are the same. And that's actually true for all of them, but we have to be careful with the signs. If we're going southeast, the I is positive and the j is negative, but the size of them is the same. Southwest, they're both negative, and northwest, the i is negative and the j is positive. So again, here, if we are moving, let's say northwest, so let's say with this one we are moving northwest, that means we have the minus i component is the same as the j component. This one's not actually going to work, but the point is still true. 
we would then rearrange this to find t. So in fact, with this velocity, it cannot move northwest. Because time can't be negative, and if we rearrange this, time is negative. So it's that kind of idea. With this card, with this compass, you're thinking about the size of the components of your velocities, displacements, whatever, and their relationship to each other. So if it's moving southeast or northwest, one of them is minus, one of them is plus. If it's moving southwest, they're both minus, northeast, they're both plus. But for all three, you set them equal to each other. For the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, you're setting one of them equal to zero and making the other one minus. That's sometimes the most confusing thing about this topic, is that idea of movement, or that idea of when the components are the same. But if you can get your head around it, it's very samey, and you get really used to what's going on there. Thank you for watching.